Hello and welcome to this After Effects certification preparation series of videos. I'm Luisa Winters. In this video, I want to cover objective 4.6, 4.6C, which is to create composites. So we're going to be talking about keying, opacity, masking effects, mats, and alpha channels. So we already discussed some of these. We certainly did masking and we did some track mats and uh, the alpha channel is simply at the channel of transparency, but we have not done keying. So let's go into After Effects and let's try it out. In After Effects, please open the composition called Keying, uh, let me make this a little bit wider so I can read it. Keying, opacity, masking, et cetera, et cetera. Double click in and here we go. We have a green screen clip and we have the pan village clip. We are going to key this one right here on top. So what is keying? Keying is what we call the weatherman effect, right? We're gonna make anything that is green, we're gonna make it transparent with the added difficulty that we have the Ziploc bag here that is semi-transparent. All right, so let's do it. Select the layer. And by the way, if you did not download the exercise files, it's okay, grab anything that you have with a green screen. And nowadays with the Zoom meetings and all of that, there's a ton of them out there and, and just key it, all right? So just follow along with whatever clip you happen to have. So here we go. Effect, keying, and there are many. There are many, but you know what? Let's forget about it. Use key light. That's the only one that you're gonna use because it's the best. There are others, but this is the one that you're gonna use, key light. Key light is made by a company called The Foundry and After Effects licenses it. So, you know, we can use it with impunity. The first thing with key light and, you know, I'm not going to go through a very dense explanation, but the first thing that you need to know in key light is that you need to choose the color to key. In other words, you need to tell After Effects, you need to tell the effect, hey, this is the green that I need you to key out. Oh, okay. Click on the eyedropper, click on the green, done. Done. That's it. Click on the eyedropper, click on the green, done. But are, is it though? Hmm, let's see if it's true. Do you see where it says final result here? Click there and go to status. Status is an exaggerated view of the mask. So this is how this works. This is going to keep the green transparent and the boy solid and the Ziploc bag semi-transparent by using grayscale colors, where pure black is going to be completely transparent, pure white is going to be completely solid, and gray is going to be grayscale. So when you change the view to status, it's giving you an exaggerated view of the mat. Okay, so you can change this to the mat. See how it's better, but it's not perfect. I mean, look at here. That should be solid. His buttons shouldn't be transparent. And look, this should be completely black. It shouldn't be gray, right? So you change it to status and then you play around with these two numbers, the screen gain and the screen balance. Only a little bit. You don't need to do a lot, just a little bit. So I'm pressing and holding control as I scrub this value. And that's pretty darn good. Look at that. It's getting rid of almost everything. Listen, don't go to like a lot. Don't do to like yay, which is like 200. That's too much. That's way too much, all right? So only do a little bit. I'm going to recommend, this is just me now, right? So you don't, you don't need to, uh, um, th th this is not written in stone. But I recommend you, you don't go too much above 110 in here. And now the screen balance, don't go too much either, only a tiny little bit, kind of like, yeah, no, that's too much. I'm going to reset that and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that's, that's good. So something like that, only a little bit. So despill, a spill 
if I go back to final result, a spill is when the edge of the subject that you want to keep take the color of the green, skin, uh, the, the green screen. So if somebody who has like blonde hair, the hair starts, especially at the edges, starts turning green, that would be a spill. In the clothes, you can see it, that would be a spill. So I don't see too much of a spill here, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna leave this spill alone. Then we have a screen pre-blur. Screen pre-blur. What we're really keying out is the green channel. And the green channel happens to be the strongest one of all of the channels, which is why we use it for keying. This actually blurs the green channel so that it's more uniform before applying the keying. So honestly, this should have been all the way up there. Because when it comes to the order of operations, the screen pre-blur, that's why it's called pre, pre, is going to happen before these other things are applied. So if I just blur this a little bit and it doesn't need to be much, only a little bit is going to help. So I'm going to go to the screen mat and I see that the edges are better, but I still see some gray parts here in the neck, on the eyes, on the hair that I really need to be solid. I don't need for his head to be semi-transparent and that's what the gray is giving me. That needs to be white. That needs to be white. So I have something called screen mat. And I have these two values. You know what? I am going to get, I'm not going to cover all the others, but I have these two. The clip black, which makes the blacks blacker. In other words, more transparent. Remember, it's this mat that is creating the transparency. So the black, make it stronger, almost completely. I mean, I have a little bit of, you know, nothingness there. And then the clip white. Look at that. Done. Fixed. Done. So this cleans up the mat. It makes the whites whiter and the blacks blacker so that the mat is cleaner. Then, you know, I'm just going to go to screen roll and, 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 and grow. So, oh, I need more. There you go. So now it's fatter. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Or less, you know. So now, ooh, it's an alien head. I'm exaggerating. But you can grow or shrink the mat. And sometimes you need to do it just by a couple of pixels. If you do need to do it, go back to the final result, zoom in. You see these edges here? Uh, not so good. We could shrink this a tiny little bit. And I mean a tiny little bit. Even more. Even more. That's what I'm talking about. See how it's almost completely done? And now I can blur the edges by using the screen softness. And let me tell you, that's a much cleaner key. All right? Even with the Ziploc, Ziploc bag. All right? So, well, maybe I lost it a little bit with the Ziploc there. Yeah, I'm going to go back and I need to go to the screen mat and that's a little too much. So I'm going to go to uh, the, the black. I'm going to have a little bit less. That's better. All right. So I go to the final result. Oh yeah, much better now. See how, how I can now, I can see the Ziploc bag. All right. Anyway, about the last thing is this. And if you're looking at the uh, screen mat, you see that there are some things in here that are kind of crappy. See it here and all of that. Nothing is stopping you from grabbing that pen tool and creating a mask around that boy. Like yay. And then those things are not even issues. Just so that you know, that mask, that's known as a garbage mat. It's not on the test or anything like that, but that's called a garbage mat because it just gets things out of, uh, you know. Just make sure that you're not cutting any of the parts that you want to keep with the mask 
And if you are, then you can always interpolate the mask to create that transparency. Alrighty, so again, I'm not gonna go through everything, but there, there is one thing in here that I do need to go through, and that is the foreground color correction. You can enable it in here and you can color correct things in here. You can do, you know, color suppression and color balancing. Like you see how he's a little bit too green. Maybe I want to have it a little, oh, ooh, that's a little too much. Right? So whatever. You can color correct them like yay. But I got to tell you, listen, we have Lumetri color. Why on earth would we use this? To color correct when we have Lumetri. Quite frankly, I mean, yes, it's there. Yes, you get, you may get asked a question about it. I doubt it, but you may. Uh, if you need to do it in real life, quite frankly, use Lumetri. I mean, there is not, 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 not much better. And then you can just change the temperature in here, you know, much easier and the tint and the saturation, you can do it so much easier using Lumetri than you would be using Eli. All right? I'm just saying. All righty. So that goes with keying, keying. So before, after, before, after, I'm just clicking here on the little effects. Now let's talk about matte. All right? So I'm going to delete the green screen, and I'm just going to, I'm, I can use anything at all. I'm going to create a star, whatever. Uh -huh. Do -do -do -do. And there you go, right? This star, this star contains an alpha channel, and you know because I'm, well, let me just do this, right? So anything in the checkerboard is transparency, and it's also known as the alpha channel. Right, so here we go. We have solid parts and we have alpha transparency in this clip. So what a track mat does is that we're going to use the transparency of this clip to apply it to this clip, all right? So that's what we're going to do. And for that, we need to go to switches and mode. So it's because we need to see the track mat here. The track mats talks to the video or to whatever clip is underneath, right? And you say, hey, Pan Village, I need you to take the transparency from the shape layer. Boom, done. Done. So how is this usable? Well, let's delete that. And let's now create two layers that are identical, right? I am going to color correct the top one. It could be the bottom, it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to correct the top one. So effect, color correction, and lumetry. In fact, it doesn't need to be lumetry. I'm just gonna go to brightness. I'm gonna make this brighter. There you go, that's all. I'm going to now use a track mat. And I'm gonna use a circle because why not? And there you go. And now I'm going to keyframe the position of that circle. Maybe I want to highlight. I'm going to start here. So P for position. And I'm going to go to one second. And now I'm going to go here. And now I'm going to go to two seconds. I'm going to go here. Three seconds. And I'm going to go here. All right. And this is just gonna act like a highlight, all right? So I'm gonna talk to the middle layer, right? To the one that I made brighter, and I'm gonna say, hey layer, your track mat is the shape layer. And now what I have is just a circle highlighting stuff. Oh, but Luisa, the edges are too, uh, uh, too harsh. It's okay, add a blur. A Gaussian blur is gonna work beautifully here. Uh, here we go. Blurriness. Add a blur. And you got it. I did it a little too much. See it?
So a track mat is when the transparency of one layer goes to a different layer. And I can do that in different ways as well. So for example, instead of doing it like that, I'm going to do a new shape layer. This one is going to be a rectangle, right? So it's a rectangle. R for rotation, and I'm just going to have it like yay. S for scale, and I'm gonna have it like yay. All right, so P for position, and I'm just going to keyframe this guy so that it goes from here. I'm gonna move that keyframe here all the way to here, all right? And that's what I have. I just have this bar going like yay. And I can have the feathered edges, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But now I'm going to talk to this and I'm going to say, hey, your track mat is the shape. And now what I have is like a sheen, right? And this is how you, you see sheens done to uh, text layers, you know, to logos, that sort of thing. It looks like really, really slick. That's how you have it. And you can do even more, right? You could duplicate this a ton of times. You can go like, yay, right? And then you can use all of these and you can pre-compose them, right? And then you can say, hey, the pre-comp is going to be the sheen that we need. Uh, sorry, it's going to be here. Yeah, it's got to be the pre-comp. Oh, I don't know why it's not working. Oh, it's because these are all turned off. Hello. And there you go. Oh, they are too harsh. You can actually blur the pre-comp. There you go. And now they just look like, I don't know, kind of like weird rays of light. They really should be going faster, but you get the point that is a track mat. And we already talked about masking. If we want to mask something, we grab one of these masking tools and we mask it, right? So everything around it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, transparent and we only keep the inside. We can actually go in instead of add, it can be subtract. If you have several masks at the same time, they can then go intersect, lighten, and all of that. But we already covered those. So I think we have covered keying, track mats, and a tiny little bit of masking. So this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.